is Winnie Harper Moyer. I was born in Buda, Texas, in Antioch Colony, and my year was 1937, July the 29th. My dad is named George Harper. My mother was named Emma Tennant Harper. Did you have uh, other siblings? Did you have brothers and sisters? Yes. Um, could you list them for me? Okay. We have five brothers. Okay. The oldest one, George Harper, Jr., deceased. Mm -hmm. The next one is Joshua Harper. The next one is Elijah Harper. Mm -hmm. And the next one was uh, Moses Harper. And the baby boy was Samuel Harper. I have five sisters. And what are their names? Miriam. Harper, Washington. Okay. Uh, Eunice Harper, Rhymes. Emily uh, he Harper Hill. Ruth Harper, Fears. And Winnie Harper Moyer. <laughs> okay. What was uh, what was your dad's occupation? Did I understand you said he was a farmer? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, what did he farm? Did, and were you uh, a part of that? Yes. Okay. He farmed uh, cotton, cane, high gear, and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And we was a part of it because we, well, besides the cows, he had cows, horses, mm -hmm. dogs, <laughs> chicken, turkeys. Guineas, mm -hmm. and ducks, and uh, we had to take care of those animals. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he farmed hay, he would go around to different farmers here in Buda, mm -hmm. and he'd cut the hay and bale it for them. And he would pick their crops, do the crops for them, whatever it was. Cutting down cane, uh, he grew corn. And we'd have to cut that down mm -hmm. and stack it. Uh, the the uh, stalks mm -hmm. of the corn, <laughs> we had to stack it together, tied in bundles, mm -hmm. and then we put them just like a Indian hut. That's mm -hmm. how we would stack them in the fields. Yeah, the fields. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did your mom do the training for in the house? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. She taught us how to iron, mm -hmm. which we had to put the irons on the coal, mm -hmm. the fire, yeah. and then she showed us how to wipe them up before you put them on the clothes. Uh -huh. And uh, taught us how to cook. Mm -hmm. Started with red beans, mm -hmm. <laughs> brown gravy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Learned from those two things until I got older. Uh -huh. And then we went to cornbread, you know, <laughs> right. one thing at a time. The higher food groups. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> mm -hmm. Was it evenly divided between your mom and dad, or was it more in the house? More mm. in the field. More in the field. The mother took care of the home. Okay. In those days, parents didn't let the young kids go in cooking and messing up food, mm -hmm. unless they were trained. I see. You were not, you didn't do that. My mother took care of that. I see. So you went to the fields with your dad? Majority, yes. I see. Okay. We, when we came along, the school had moved from up in the uh, pastor, I guess you call it, mm -hmm. and moved down to where mm -hmm. we built in the church at, and we had a two-room school mm -hmm. that was built by the Revaders. They all was masons, and uh, they took the rocks out of the you know woods and gathered them up. And that school was made out of rock. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you said it was a two-room school. Two-room school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Divided by the age of the students? Who yes. Were there? Uh -huh. Like the first grade, second and third grade was in one room, mm -hmm. and then the fourth through the eighth was okay. in another room. Okay. And we had a kitchen in there, but we had outdoors restroom. Uh -huh. And this is uh, a Callahan and Mrs. Woody. Catherine Woody from San Marcos and Mrs. Callahan were from San Marcos. Mm -hmm. Those two teachers. And Miss Woody mm -hmm. 
uh, Callahan, mm -hmm. not Callahan, well, both of them was, but uh, Miss Woody didn't whoop me as often as Miss Callahan did. <laughs> she wouldn't whip you? She wouldn't. <laughs> wouldn't? Uh-uh. She'd tell me she gonna whoop me, but she didn't whoop me. <laughs> and I liked it her better, because Miss Callahan, she whooped the hardest. And what did she, she do with a paddle or a switch? Or? Ruler. 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 <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So she said she going to get you, she got you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Was that an everyday kind of thing? Did yeah. somebody get it every day? Or? Every day. <laughs> oh, what store did, did your parents deal with? Um, Mrs. Stacy Grocery Store mm -hmm. and Mr. Cecil Clark. <laughs> yeah, I like Mr. Clark's store better because he let us get candy and gum on it. Miss Stacy wouldn't. She says, "That's not food for a whole family, so you can't have it." I see. You're running George Bill up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. So, so you could actually charge on your mm -hmm. dad's bill. Yeah. My very well, just going there shopping with my dad, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm not going to end up picking up something that had no business or some sweets or something. Cause mother made all that. Yeah. So I just follow along, seeing what he get on his grocery list. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But Mr. Clark, I'm like winning. I like going down there. Ice cream at that time was only 15 cents a uh, pint. Yeah. And then it went to 25 cents. Yeah. But nevertheless, you just go in and get whatever you want to, and just feel a little bit felt a freedom. Yes. And his, oh, you know, he wasn't so. Um, I guess he wasn't so tight. Right. You know, because he knew we were George children, and mm -hmm. he knew whatever we got. George was straightening out and we mm -hmm. got the wrong things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we always told to go in and get one thing or two things, mm -hmm. all you could get. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I did. But my favorite was ice cream <laughs> and Mr. Goodbar candy. And Mr. Goodbar <laughs> candy. Was your dad treated with respect, I guess is my question? Yes. Okay, great. Glad to hear that. Yes. Very much so. And today, if uh, we run into somebody that knew my dad and we say we are Harpers. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they, they oh, George, you, George's daughter? Yes. You know, and I said, yeah. And if it's something just like a Mr. Love electrician, mm -hmm. he used to come through and talk to my dad about the colony, you know, learn all about it. Mm -hmm. And I told, when I called him to do some work for me, and I told him I was George Harper's daughter. And he said, oh, he said, well, then I'll give you a discount. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so I appreciate that. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. oh. No, it's nothing hard to talk about. They didn't like you. They just didn't like you. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, it was racist. They let you know they was racist so yes, you wouldn't bother to hold no conversation with them. Right. right. And, you, and we didn't. We was, came from a Christian family, yes, so we was taught to treat everybody the same. Yes, ma'am. And even if they mistreated you, you just pray for them and go head on. Don't start no, you know, ruckus with them. I see. Just get out of their sight. Okay. So we do that. All That's right. how daddy taught us. Didn't want us to start no trouble, you know, mm -hmm. and get locked up from arguing back with somebody that didn't like you. Well, we went to Florida Ada first before we went to, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, okay. and someone out there in Florida had told him if he go to Arizona, the crops was more, you know, they had lots more crops out there, okay. and they paid more money. Mm -hmm. So he gathered us all up, including a bunch of friends uh -huh. that wanted to follow him out there, mm -hmm. and he bought him a big old, what was it, 1950 Chevrolet truck, mm -hmm. and he put a top podium over top of it. Wow and put us all in the back of there. <laughs> wow. And we all moved to Arizona. Uh-huh. We went to, uh, what's the I mean, that first place we went to in Arizona before we moved to Phoenix. Florence. Florence, okay. Florence Arizona. Okay. We stayed there, I think about a year, and they told us it was better in Phoenix. Okay. So we moved to Phoenix. Oh. What happened to Antioch Colony in the meantime? Because obviously your family was one of the big families mm -hmm. of the community. Well, most of them, uh, the elderly ones passed away, mm -hmm. and the young ones moved to Austin mm -hmm. in different you know, cities in Texas. Mm -hmm. Some went to California. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, my uncle, my dad's brother, and his wife, and 
daughter and son, they remain here going to um, at Antioch Church mm -hmm. up there. And a few neighbors, the Buttons mm -hmm. and the Circes, I think, was left till they all, you know, passed away. My, the house where we was born, okay. it was still standing. Mm -hmm. And uh, my cousin's house, uh, we call him Ted Kavanaugh, his house is still standing. And uh, my cousin there with the Anderson, she married Louis Anderson. They, uh, they house was still standing. And uh, I think that's about uh -oh. Yeah, Miss May Pete's old house, that's right. Her house was still standing. Mm -hmm. But I think that was all. George Smithman didn't have any house on their property, mm -hmm. but he finally put a trailer on there. Okay. No church? No. They had towed the church down just before I came. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, at that time, it was the parents took you to church. They took you to Sunday school, 11 o'clock service, and 6 p.m. service. And we had no choice to follow our parents, but as I recall, the main thing I really got out of uh, church service, the prayers. They prayed out loud, they got on their knees and they prayed out loud. And they couldn't help but understand that they're praying for the families and the church and the communities and thanking God for his blessings. And that was, uh, and to see it come, come to pass, mm -hmm. the thing they prayed for. And I learned how to pray by him, my dad praying aloud in the church. Mm -hmm. He didn't miss nothing, to my knowledge, yeah. from the members of your body <laughs> to, to all your health and strength. Yes. So it was an instance that we had said quiet. Mm -hmm. And we sat at one time I was on the edge of the bench and I happened to put my foot out in the hall, like, you know. And my dad, you know how the parents watch the children around the church. They'd be looking around and see how you're acting. My dad's probably like, they come back and spank me on my leg. I just knew I went crazy. <laughs> I just went practically almost blind. She was so bad. <laughs> Because all those folks in church and it didn't make him no different. <laughs> but I didn't do that again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, really, to me, you hadn't changed too much because they didn't have no uh, daycare like they have now. They didn't have these additional stores that they have in buildings. And I think they only started really improving as in back in uh, 1998. Eight in 1998 because mm -hmm. uh, uh, at that time uh, we was uh, had a plan for a vision plan for the colony mm -hmm. and we had in there a uh, daycare and a uh, places for the elder and after that then things started booming to mm -hmm. my knowledge you know because mm -hmm. there was our plans that we had took them to the city. Mm -hmm. So out that they had daycare run all over. Mm -hmm. They only had one elder place I know of. That's they are bluffed in uh, 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 Hayes Trail. Mm -hmm. That that uh, that uh, elder home there. Yes, ma'am. But after that, it seemed to me that things started booming in 2000. To see different um, peoples to move into the neighborhood was a change, you know, to me. And, uh, white families had moved into Antioch Colony mm -hmm. and there wasn't that many blacks. Mm -hmm. And uh, the things as far as peoples go mm -hmm. was a little better. You know, they didn't um, treat you wrong. You know, they look at you and look off, you know, mm -hmm. to keep you from looking at them. Mm -hmm. Everybody was more friendly. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Good to hear. Yeah. Was there anyone in particular who stands out in your mind as um, particularly welcoming when you came back? Uh, yes, uh, the postmaster, mm -hmm. and I was trying to think of his name while you was talking, but mm -hmm. I can't remember his name. He was very friendly and uh, I told him that we was moving back, you know, we didn't have a mailbox mm -hmm. and wanted him to put a mailbox, you know, over that area. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, he welcomed us and told us anything we needed, you know, what we didn't know about to let him know. And I did, and he's the one that uh, Dad decided to name the street that we own, Old Black Colony Road. Mm -hmm. So I went to him and asked him, how do I go about doing that? And he told me. So That's he was very helpful, you know, yeah. for our community. But it came before the Civil War, I think after Grandpa died. Okay. Then uh, Grandmother moved okay. to Hayes County. All right. Her mother moved. So that was our great-grandfather, okay. not our grandfather. So for generations back, yeah. the family had been here. Riley, Riley. Mm -hmm. He yeah. gave it each person so many acres, mm -hmm. families, for, to move them off the property where they was working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, uh, did, was that ever talked about in your family? Uh, oh, yes. Mr. Riley? Daddy drilled that in our heads. Really? <laughs> I don't There's know how I could ever forget his name. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, how nice he was to the, you know, to the black people's gave him a start. Yeah. And I think he worked for everybody around here in Buda mm -hmm. that had a farm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to take care of his children because he worked on the railroad track uh, for the railroad company starting in uh, Kinchinville. Mm -hmm. That's where he started, yeah, because that's when that, uh, what they used to call cyclone came through mm -hmm. and he was working on the railroad track and he said, oh Lord, he said, don't take my family, you know, but it wasn't nobody there but his wife. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't get to him, you know, uh, it was a school there and uh, other houses, the white peoples, mm -hmm. but they was the only blacks that lived around that, in that area. I see. And uh, they couldn't come. They told him, to, they're going towards your house, George. He said, Lord, save my wife, you know. And uh, this little boy, my mom told us many times that he was getting out of school and he came through there where her house was and told her, lady, you got to get out, you know. She said, he said, come on, let's go to the school. So they went to the school when this tornado came through. Uh -huh. And his brother lived somewhere close to there, but it wasn't where he were. You know, I guess on another man's farm. And uh, his family uh, got tossed in the in the storm, mm -hmm. and one of the children got killed. Mm -hmm. But the other two were saved. Mm -hmm. I think they were thrown in a ditch somewhere. Wow. But the baby died. The little his little baby. Mm -hmm. And mother lost her uh, eye in the storm. Two before I went through her head and come out through her eye. Her and this little uh, boy, was in, they, she wrapped him in her arms and they got in a corner and it blew out all the glass in the school. And the two before, you know, glass was flying everywhere. So I don't recall her saying that he got hurt because she said she covered him up, you know, with her body to keep him from getting uh, hurt. And that's what I think the only thing. Well, she had another uh, splinter. Went, the splinter went through her head, and the two people before it went through her hip. That's the way it was. And uh, she was crippled from that, you know, to, for years. They hadn't had any kids in, at that time. Uh -huh. But they got her straight, you uh -huh. know, doctors work with her. And the yeah. only thing, you know, she never did get her eye back. Mm -hmm. So she had one eye mm -hmm. the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. Were you involved in picking cotton? Oh, you ever? Yes. Oh boy. Yeah, that <laughs> oh, sun boy. up to sundown. Sun up to sundown. Mm -hmm. That's big time. Yeah. Uh, how big an area would you would you cover? I mean, uh, town wise, was it all in the immediate Buda area? Or would you have to go farther out? No, we went all the way, all over East Texas, oh, really? Corpus Christian. Gallus, all of those towns down there. Large town. Picking cotton. Wow, hard work. Yes, <laughs> very hard. Did you ever, uh, what was your record in a day? Did you weigh your, your sack at, oh, the, yes. at the end of the day? Or no. Your sacks, you'd fill more than one, I'm sure. Right, every, every road that you went down the roads, you go start at the end and go down and turn and come back. So if you, it was a lot of cotton, you fill your sack up a couple of times mm -hmm. before you 
got up there to the end. Mm -hmm. Long sacks. Yeah. yeah, you had to pick them up, pack them to the scales. Yeah and the way it, and then he emptied it, and then you go back down and where you left off it and come back. I see. Mm -hmm. Do you have a sense, uh, many of how many pounds of cotton in a day you might be expected to pick? Oh, I think I've picked maybe 100 pounds. 100 pounds is a lot of cotton. Mm -hmm. In a day's time, you pick more than that, because yeah. some of the sacks weighed yeah. 60 and 70 pounds, yeah. you know. I've, I've we, heard real big, now I've heard Heard. Never had to pick it. Yeah. 300 pounds, 400 pounds in a day. Yeah. yeah. We started pulling bows out west, in West Texas, Florida, mm -hmm. and they weighed up to 100 pounds at one time. Wow. And you'd have to carry that or mm -hmm. drag it to the scales. My mother would make the little ones uh, sacks out of, they bought 50, 25 pound sack of flour uh -huh. and uh, feed to come in the the uh, grass sacks. Yeah. She would tie a uh, necktie around them, a piece of rope, uh -huh. and uh, make a sack out of it. I see. And they'd put them on, <laughs> pick cotton. Wow. Would your uh, mom bring meals out to you? Oh, yes. She cooked them. You didn't go she back to the house. Cook. You stayed in the field, right? Yes. The tree or something. Set up on the trailer when it was hot. You know, we'd get in the shady part of the trailer. Mm -hmm. And that's why we would eat. She would serve it from the truck mm -hmm. that Daddy had. Mm -hmm. She would have everything in the basket mm -hmm. in the back of the truck. And that's where we, she'd fix our plates. And we'd go sit down. We had tin tops uh -huh. <laughs> at that time. So we'd put them all in one of the baskets to go back to the house, uh -huh. you know, when we finished. But we'd pick the dark. Uh -huh. How nice the clerks were to people, period. Yes, Regardless of the race, green and color. Uh -huh. We must have lost them until 1979 when we moved out here to see more. Mm -hmm. But to us, we never was uh, people, we were people of color. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter to us. It was nice, they're nice. If it wasn't, they wasn't. Right. You know, so it doesn't matter, you know, who was changed and mm -hmm. who had not changed. Right. But the elders around here mm -hmm. has spoke well of my father, yes. and the change that was made, uh, we were I think, the first to go to the city hall in Buda, uh -huh. and people were very nice there, and that's where I met Mr. Barton uh, again. Yes, uh, Bob Barton. Yes. Yeah. And we was introducing ourselves, and, he, and I said I was a harper, and he says, uh, to George Harper's daughter, he said, well, uh, you heck as good as your father. <laughs> You're doing well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's so, a real compliment. Yes, mm -hmm. they had elders of the, of the community here that been around. They were very polite and spoke well. I wouldn't know until someone would come back and say, you're a Harper. And uh, they would say, they were speaking well of the Harper. I said, what's my dad? <laughs> mm -hmm. My parents, my mother, she went for the Watson. Roscoe Watson, Miss Miller Watson, and all the Watson you know, around there, different ones. Yes, ma'am. House cleaning for them. Uh -huh. And so they were always nice. My dad always did good work for them, and you know, we had nothing to complain about because mm -hmm. we was just independent as the next person, I guess. Mm -hmm. Not much was independent. <laughs> I guess it really meant something to be from the Harper family, from the George Harper family. Yes, George Harper family. Yeah. Yeah, it was a big change, and they was, you know, white and blacks going to school together, and, uh -huh. and they had uh, not a whole lot of black employees, but they had hired some, you know, to work, uh -huh. where you didn't work on no job here in Buda, you know. And uh -huh. Austin had changed a whole lot, you know. They had colleges, uh -huh. plus uh, they had areas where they was teaching other kids, black kids training mm -hmm. jobs if they was uh, low in education, you know, mm -hmm. they had a um, school where they would had put together mm -hmm. to teach them, you know, if they didn't qualify for the regular public school, they had a place where they could take them and teach them, you know. And then the, the black guys was playing football, which um, the <laughs> university didn't allow them to play. You know, and over there, they only played as far as high school, and uh, they didn't let them go to university. 
so they didn't have any black uh, teammates until they finally decided to let them play, try them out, you know, and then they find out they could play. So that had changed, and I enjoyed that because I went to Addison High School. Mm -hmm. And when you left there, if you didn't go out of town to college, you didn't go to, didn't go to Texas college. University. Yeah. You know, and not blacks. I went to Phoenix, Arizona, and yeah. moved them here when they got where they couldn't, you know, really mother couldn't take care of a I lot see. of the needs. I see. So I brought them here and moved them in with me. Okay. And I took care of them until they passed away. And it, it just, I don't know, they kind of take away a little bit when they put it in these new neighborhoods, you know. But I love it because the trees and the empty land, you know, and then the peoples here, really, that lives in the colony are were very friendly. I done moved away, but uh, them that moved in their places, they still friendly. Right. Nice, treat you just like you one of them. Yeah. So I appreciate that, you know. Everybody in my neighborhood really is very, you know, beautiful people. So, so I really like that. Many, how about yourself? Last word about Antioch <laughs> Colony? It's among the greatest colonists. Yes, ma'am. And I really enjoy it. It's history for me. I born and raised here. It's home. And I just enjoy trying to expand it as much as possible. It's what's left of it. Okay.